sisters, this is Dr. William Snubham coming to you from With One Accord Ministries with another in our series of Treasure Guardians videos. And uh, as we're filming this uh, around the first couple days of September, we are drawing close to the what are what are called in the Bible the High Holy Days, uh, beginning with um, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets. And then 10 days after that is, of course, Yom HaKippurim, the Day of Atonement. Uh, and this is really the most intense, sacred time in the biblical calendar. And I want to just talk, we've, we've done a couple other video teachings about this, but I want to just bring it home somehow. And I want to start out by reading the passage in Leviticus that, that discusses this. This is in Leviticus chapter 23. And verse 24, and we read, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, shall you have a Shabbat, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Now, what you see there is the, the, the bare bones of it. But the idea is, the word trumpet there is shofar, and it is like the beginning of judgment day. And of course, even, even in, in the New Testament, you see in the book of Revelation the same idea that the, you know, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised, you know, all of this. This is all part and parcel of the same day. And that's why most people uh, that understand the Torah and understand Yeshua and his role in the Torah, understand that in all probability, when he comes back on silver clouds of glory, as the old song says, he is going to come back on or about Yom HaTeruah, the Day of Trumpets, because that is, that is almost certainly when he is going to make his return or begin to make his return. It is also the beginning every year this cycle comes around of judgment and it's a time when it, among devout jews and also hopefully among knowledgeable believers in yeshua whether jewish or, or gentile that they really focus their hearts on repentance on teshuva on on examining themselves seeking you know because we get through we go through a year and I don't think any of us get through a year without sinning, you know. And because of that, we need to bring our consciences and our hearts and our thoughts before the heavenly court. And this is the time to do it. This is a propitious time to do it. It's not like on December 25th. It's not like on Easter Sunday. It's, it's now. This is when we are to prepare our hearts and we get ready because on Yom Kippur, we'll probably do a teaching about that as we draw closer to it. But right now I'm focusing on the day of, of trumpets. We are to begin the process there of examining ourselves, purifying ourselves, asking ourselves, how did I fail last year? How did I let our Heavenly Father down? Uh, who did I hurt? Did I offend anybody? you know, family, friends, whatever, and, and bring those things before the throne and ask forgiveness for them. And, you know, whatever, I mean, I know there is within with the body of Christ, there are those that say you can't use, lose your salvation, and there are those that say you can. I mean, I'm not getting into that right now, but I, whatever your belief on that, the point is you are going to have eternal consequences for the sins that you commit, even after salvation. Now, what are those consequences? Are the loss of merit in the eternal realm? Or what are those consequences? Are the loss of, of salvation? I'm That's a whole nother teaching. But what I think you need to do is is to keep short accounts. And when you, if you sin every day, in a, in a given day, you shouldn't wait until the Feast of Trumpets to repent of it. You should do it that very day, that very hour. If you've committed a sin, you need to repent of it right then and there. But, uh, you know, in addition to that, this is like kind of the end of year thing when you balance the books. 
And then on Yom Kippur, you go before the king of the universe, the Melech Olam, and you ask for him to forgive you. And this is powerful stuff. I mean, don't underestimate this. Just because you you might be a Christian who believes, oh, I once say that I always say hallelujah. Well, that's, that's fine. But you still need to realize that the sins you commit will have consequences if you don't repent of those sins. So I want to put that all in the context of this, <clears throat> frankly, this very crazy season that we are in. I mean, we are having some of those bizarre, terrible things happening right now in the world. Um, you know, this whole thing with Afghanistan that happened a couple of weeks ago. I mean, all the different things that are going on in the world and in America that are just very, very distressing. We need to really understand that the the evil one, the Sitra Akra, the other side, the bad guys, are really ratcheting things up. They're tightening the screw, so to speak, tighter and tighter and tighter on on the body of Moshiach, on believers. And like, okay, whose side are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the side of evil or are you going to be on the side of good? And he's trying to, you know, because again, the word devil means, it comes from the, the, <clears throat> the Greek word diabolos, which means divide. He's a divider. He divides families. He divides nations. He divides the world, frankly. And he's trying to really do that. And we need to, on the one hand, you know, live our own lives in shalom, and towards all individuals and we need to not be using bad foul language against other people or lashon hara you know speaking evil things about other people but additionally you know we need to try and reach out and do what we can to heal the wounds that are in our society and that's a big job and we we can't do it all but but yeshua can and we need to pray for that shalom but but my point, I guess, this year is especially with all the, the, the tensions, the the war. I mean, we could have all kinds of stuff breaking out here because of what has happened in Afghanistan. We could have, you know, terrorists marching across our southern border, <coughs> southern border, excuse me. We could have, you know, bombs going off. We could have riots. We could have all kinds of things happening on American soil. And we need to repent nationally we need to repent individually we need to repent as church and we need to take this desperately seriously this year because we might you know yeshua might come in a week are you ready because he could very well come in a week and again that gets into the whole rapture thing which i don't want to talk about it's too complicated all i'm saying is you need to live every day as if it's judgment day okay that gets me into the second part of this, which is sort of related. And that is the fact that, you know, in the midst of all of this criticality, there is a lot of concern about certain things that are happening in society. And I just want to address this real quickly, very carefully. I, people have asked, a lot of people have asked me, if I go out and I get a cow, is that getting the mark of the beast? And, you know, I think we need to look at this because it's a serious question. It deserves a serious answer. So let's look at Revelation 13 and see what it says. This is where we find the whole thing about the mark of the beast. In uh, 13, verse 15, we read, and he, meaning uh, the, the, the second beast, this is, had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And then, of course, it goes on to talk about the number of his name is 600, three, score, three score, and six. So a lot of people look at this from a prophetic standpoint, and they look at what's going on in the world, and they're worried about this whole cow thing. Like, if I get a cow, am I getting the mark of the beast? And let me just 
say this. And this is my opinion. I have prayed about this a lot because we've literally gotten dozens of people asking us about this. First of all, you understand in, in the idea, this is very serious because if, if you if you take the mark knowingly and willingly, it costs you your soul. Deadly, deadly serious stuff. You're, you're going to end up in a lake of fire if you take the mark. Now, here's the thing, though. If you understand sin as it's, under, as it's expressed in the Bible and in the, the history of the teachings of both Christian saints and the sages of Israel, to commit a sin, you have to doing, be doing it knowingly, okay? If you, if you do something without understanding, like it's a sin, then, then it, may, it may still be a sin objectively, but it is not a sin to you unless you consented to it. So, number one, you can't be tricked into doing something. You can't do something unknowingly. Um, so, I mean, if you got a cow innocently and didn't think there was anything wrong with it, then it's not a sin. That kind of should be self-evident. And especially something as serious as this. Now, secondly, uh, to be a sin, you have to do it willingly. You can't do it under duress. And again, a lot of people, they feel like they're being forced into this in some way or another. So that, I think, also vitiates the idea, mitigates, if you will, the idea that this is the mark of the beast. I don't believe it is. Um, I have taught for at least 20, 25 years. You'll find my teachings on this uh, in a more uh, safe environment on some DVDs um, about what this, I believe it is, the mark of the beast, but it's not this. However, I do believe that it might be a trial run for that because you'll notice the third component that's mentioned in this tra this uh, passage of scripture, and that is it's connected to worship. You you have to worship this beast, this antichrist figure, and obviously, you know you don't have to do that to buy a cow. So I don't think it is what what people think of as the mark of the beast. However, I think it still might be a very unhealthy thing to get a cow right now. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it if I were you, but that's, you know, my opinion as a naturopathic physician, and that's all it is, uh, you know, but it's not like I think it's going to cost you your soul. It might cost you your health, but that that's a different matter altogether. So I think what we need to do is Look at what's going on in the world right now. Look at what's going on, the, the kind of games that are being played with us by the government and the bureaucracy of this nation. Understand that in some ways the Almighty is preparing us for something more profoundly wicked. Because we might have to go through something. I, again, I know different believable people have different <coughs> theologies about that. But, but if we have to go through a more severe trial than what we have now, which is very possible, brothers and sisters. We need to be ready, and the only way we're going to be ready is if we go through Yom Teruah, purify our hearts, purify our souls, ask the Father in heaven to unite our hearts so that we might love and fear his name and worship him and him alone. Get all the idols out of your life. And I not mean just little gold statues of Buddha or something. I mean, you know, anything that in, is in your life that's more important to you than the almighty king of the universe, you need to get rid of it. And you not, not in maybe in the sense like, you know, if it's your job, obviously you don't want to get rid of it. But you, you do want to not put anything before him. And you want to be his bondservant above all else. You want to serve him and him alone. Hallelujah. So that is the way you will be prepared for what may be coming. It may not be coming, but it's better to have your armor on, to be prayed up, 
to be purified, to have your engine clean, so to speak, and to be pure before the throne. Because you, whether you understand it or whether you believe it or not, by the time you get to, uh, let's see, it's going to be the Day of Atonement is the 16th of this month. So that's a little over two weeks from now. You need to be ready. You need to be ready to stand before the throne. Whether or not Yeshua comes back physically and claims the earth as his own, which would be, hallelujah, wonderful, or whether you just are there spiritually. Because you'll be there spiritually whether you know it or not. If you don't believe in the Day of Atonement, oh well. The Father in heaven believes in it. Yeshua believes in it. It's his set-apart day. And we'll talk more about that in, in a few days. But for now, I just want to share these two major concepts with you. And I want you to, to fast and to pray and to really spend the next two weeks really examining yourself. Is there anything I can do to be a more effective soldier? in the army of Yeshua? Is there anything I can do to be more set apart, more holy? You know, because he says, you know, walk before me and be perfect. And that's the message I have for you. And that's the challenge that these, these high days are, are presenting us. How can we purify our hearts? How can we purify our bodies and be more worthy servants of his so that when challenges come in our life, whether they're, they're global or governmental challenges or whether they're just personal challenges in our lives, you know, illnesses or job problems, or whatever, am I ready? Am I fortified? Do I have the armor of light? Do I have the garment of light? Am I charged up and ready to take on whatever the world throws at me? Because if you are transforming yourself by the renewing of your mind, every day through prayer and scripture study, then you will be ready to take anything the world, the flesh, or the devil throw at you. Hallelujah. And that's a comfort in and of itself. Because you know right now in this world, there are saints of Elohim who are being tortured, who are being killed for their faith in places like Africa and North Korea and probably China too and other places in the world, the Middle East. We know right now Christians are in grave peril in Afghanistan. We need to pray for them especially. But you need to pray that you would be ready for whatever the world, the flesh, and the devil throw at you and to purify your hearts and your minds. So with all that being said, I pray that you have a blessed day. I pray that this has been helpful to you if you're wrestling with these questions. And I, I pray that you would have a, a, a day and a week full of shalom as you, we get ready for the day of trumpets. I pray that Yeshua would be filling your hearts and your minds with his love, his shalom, his healing, and his righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you, friends. If you find this kind of material helpful, we would ask you that you would subscribe and share. Uh, get this message out because the more people that repent and do teshuva, the more people, the more power the, the Guf Mashiach, the body of Messiah, will have to push back against the forces of darkness. And finally, we are a faith ministry. would appreciate it if you feel so led to uh, support our ministry through your tithes and offerings. Thank you very much. May you be richly blessed in all that you do, in all that you pray, in all that you are. Shalom. Shalom.